Okay. All right. Well, Sorry, babe. <laughs> high on many people's list, Gus, is snoring. And I'm speaking from experience here because my husband, Daz, is a chronic snorer. And I have a checklist when he, when he takes off with the <laughs> snoring, right? Uh, firstly, I have to make sure his hand isn't behind his head. Then I have to roll him onto his side. <laughs> then I get the elbow into him. And then if that's no good, then I'm shaking and going, stop snoring, stop snoring, stop snoring. Oh. And eventually we wow. get a good night's sleep. Joe, there is nothing worse. It feels like you're being woken in the middle of the night by a freight train and it really is hard to get back to sleep and it can put you into a bit of a stressful state and it could interrupt that very valuable REM sleep that we're all looking for. Yes, that is exactly right. Well, either way, it's not fun for anybody. Just ask Stu. He turned the story of his snoring problem into a musical. Snoring. It's the dirty little secret happening in beds everywhere. But one snorer, Stu Walker, has taken his story of snoring from the bedroom to the stage. I found out that I snored because my wife told me. It's fair to say that, that she wasn't happy about the snoring and like, you know, she slept with earplugs and, and uh, you know, then you know, ended up, I sort of got kicked out to the bungalow. I can hear you snore from the neighbour's house next door. All I want is a peaceful night, but it's like I'm sleeping with a motorbike. It was very, like, loud enough to, like, hear, like, outside. But Stu found it hard living day to day with the symptoms of snoring. I you know, wake up feeling you know, like I'm hungover despite not drinking. Like I found I had lots of headaches and I was also really tired during the day. So like, I work in IT and there were a few times where during the afternoon I sort of went face first into the keyboard. then that Stu thought he'd better do something about it. So at first I thought that it might have been like a kind of like a, a mucus build up in the back of my throat. Um, so like I tried some, some nasal spray to try and deal with that. Um, I tried losing weight, uh, not so successfully. And uh, so then, yeah, that, so then was off to the, the doctor to, to get checked out. After a sleep study, it was found that Stu had sleep apnea, a condition that causes you to stop breathing while asleep. Because my sleep apnea was moderate, I was a candidate for a thing called a mandibular advancement splint, which is kind of like a mouth guard that you wear that, that pushes your lower jaw forward so that um, it helps to keep your airways open. But after 15 years of using the splint, it stopped working. And so Stu moved to a CPAP machine. I knew that CPAP was the last roll of the dice and that now a lot of people do have trouble coping with CPAP, but I just thought, well, I've got to make it work. And luckily for Stu and his wife Mary Ann, it has. But Stu's story does not end there. There's a big twist at the end, which is to find out that I'm all good, and but then uh, it turns out that, that Mary Ann's snoring and, and she has sleep apnea as well. And now we have now his and hers CPAP machines. One more time, oh yeah, my baby has sleep apnea. <laughs> Stu's musical just played at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival to rave reviews. What about that? The missus has been giving him stick all his life <laughs> yeah. and now it's a double whammy. Yeah. She's yep. keeping him up and vice versa. Glass so houses. What do they call no. that? Well, when both of, that's called divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after the break, pull out your earplugs, put your chin 